Okay, now we are going to see nodes again, but this time texture nodes. So we add a texture like we always did. Let's just go click add new. And in the texture, usually we will just choose a, a texture type from the list. But in this time we are going to press the nodes button. And now a weird checkerboard appears on the preview and nothing else. That's because we have to go to the node editor and click on the little texture icon there on the header. And now it makes more sense. We have a checker node up there and an output node down there with the name default. And in, on the texture channels we have uh, our texture and a little drop down menu which says use output default. That makes a little bit more sense. So in these texture nodes we have a lot of uh, a lot of nodes that are pretty similar to the ones seen on the material nodes or on the compositing nodes. But in this uh, nodes we can also choose from any texture type we want, like in this case a Boronoi texture. We can also use some uh, color tools like mix in this case. So I'm mixing me my uh, ugly checkerboard with my Boronoi texture. And with a factor of one, I'm multiplying. But let's uh, make something more fun, which is, uh, for example, rotation. That's something we can't, we couldn't do until now from the texture settings. But now we can from the texture nodes. We can rotate our texture. And we can even translate our texture, but, well, we could before from the offset settings on the texture, but since we are in nodes, every value could be anything. So now for example let's use the, the black and white values from my Boronoi texture as an offset for uh, translating or yeah it's more like a displacement of uh, this texture. That's so cool. It's pretty nice. You can do really ugly textures with this but also pretty beautiful ones. Not my case though. Okay, let's leave it like that for now. We're going to tweak it later. This texture is uh, it's affecting the map to the color, the call by default. But what if we want to change the color? We can always change it from the checkerboard or we could just use another color tool like for example Hue saturation value. value. So now just change a little bit, play it with the settings, factor, yeah. Right, so uh, now we have a totally different texture there. But something more fun even would be to decompose, uh, separate this RGB and alpha channels and play with them separately. We could combine them as well later with Compose. There are also two patterns we can pick from. The first one is Checker, which is the one we uh, by default. And the other one is Bricks, which you may already are thinking about is what Bricks do. Well, they do Bricks, but if you tweak it, you can do really weird things with it. It's fun. It's not only for bricks actually. If you get to play a little bit with it, it's, you can do crazy things. But talking about crazy things, what if we could animate every value here on the texture uh, and the texture nodes? And we can, we have a time node, which is awesome. For example, let's, uh, you can connect this time value to whatever you want. For example, let's uh, make an interesting uh, shape in our Boronoi, or something we can understand at least. 
So later we're going to change one of these values with the time node. The time node is a curve which you already played with in, in for example, in the uh, in RGB nodes or in some other parts for the brushes, for example. This is just a curve. The bottom part is will be like value zero, while the top part will be value one. And the left part says start star one, start frame one. And the, the last one is uh, the end frame. So Blender now will go from frame 1, value 0, up to uh, value 1 on frame 250. So as you can see now, if you move around, just I'm just pressing now uh, the up arrow. So I move every 10 frames. You can see from frame 1 to 250, the values of my textures are changing. It's so nice, so fun. What if we, I want this texture to be to affect the normal, like a bump map? I can't by default because the normal value of this texture, of this output actually, is uh, different. I have to convert it first. For example, we from the converter menu the value to normal node. Now I'm converting this, uh, the RGB values I, I got from the used region node into actually uh, a normal, something we could use for the normals. So that means we can have in one texture, we could use the, we could have a color, a type of uh, like a color for this texture, totally independent from what the normal, the, the bump from it is. Something even cooler is that we can have different outputs from uh, from the same texture. For example, I just duplicate the output, change the name there, and I can pick from the dro drop down menu, use output, there in the texture panel. That's so nice, from one texture we could have a lot of really different uh, textures. That's really nice. We can just duplicate, for example, make it, I don't know, a little bit green. So just play with the hue saturation value node, change the name, and now you have it on that drop down menu. It's so nice. I love this uh, this feature. So as you can see, you can play with all kinds of things here. I hope you enjoy this. Now let's move to Fraka.